What advice would I give to male or female senior citizens when it comes to protecting themselves? Well, this isn't a sexy topic. I'm going to say something that's not at all sexy. Because what you want to hear is, don't worry, senior citizens are perfectly capable of throwing high side kicks and spinning wheel kicks, and with a bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu they can choke people out. And that might be true for some senior citizens, but what's important for senior citizens more than anything else, and the same is true for you if you're a 25-year-old uh, gym monkey, is awareness. You have to maintain awareness. Somebody's knocking at your door. Who is it? Why are they knocking? Before just opening the door, have a look. You're walking down the street and your spider sense starts tingling. Do something about it. Don't just keep on going. A lot of people prey on seniors because they're getting a little bit foggy upstairs. And that's a really tough thing to address because I'm basically saying, use your awareness, use your brain. And so I don't think that applies if you're an early stage Alzheimer's or, or you know, senility. So assuming that you still have all your mental faculties about you, familiarizing yourself with the typical problems that are in your neighborhood that seniors are going to run into. Oh yeah, you know, like learning that a Nigerian prince is very, very, very unlikely to email you with a special offer uh, that you only need to transfer $10,000 into his bank account and then he will uh, you know, reimburse you a millions of dollars because his great-grandfather died, that this is a scam. That uh, you know, people uh, coming to your door and asking to use your telephone is probably not a good idea. You know, maybe they were raised in a different era when people did that, but nowadays people don't do that. Probably the only person coming to the door and asking to use a telephone is somebody who wants to take advantage of you. So awareness is really the key. The rest is really dependent on their physical capabilities. I mean, physical fitness is the foundation of everything. It's even the foundation of awareness. If you're in a situation where you're running from an attacker, you should still have to maintain awareness. You have to keep an eye on whether there's somebody behind you, is there people in front of you, are you going into a bad part of town, are you running out in the street and gonna get run over by a car? That's still awareness. If you're so tunneled by exhaustion and you can't breathe, your, your intelligence, your awareness, your perception, everything goes to crap. So, you know, your, your physical attribute underlie your ability to pull off any self-defense moves. If you're so weak that you can barely bend over and pick up a box, well, good luck doing an armbar because an arm, like picking up a box here is using, engaging your spinal erectors and your, your hips to pick something up. How are you going to you know, do an armbar if you have difficulty picking up a box? So I think for senior citizens, some strength and conditioning is super important because it'll keep them sharper mentally. There's lots of science showing that. It'll prevent, I mean, honestly, the danger of falling and breaking your hip is a lot higher than some random guy coming and, you know, your money or your life. That's a pretty easy answer, by the way. It's your money. Give your money. But the odds of physically incapacitating yourself, as opposed to being physically incapacitated by some attacker, are much, much higher um, as you get older. So I would actually make the argument that working on your physical conditioning, taking a basic weight training for seniors course, is probably the single best thing you can do for self-defense. Once that's under control, then I think some jiu-jitsu, because probably you're smaller, you're weaker, and the only place you're going to be able to win a fight, really, is on the ground, unless you're armed. So you got to go either really, really, really close, jiu-jitsu, or really, really far away, handguns. So those are, those are the answers. While we're on the topic of fitness, I'm not even talking fitness, I'm talking health. Here's something I find really, really strange. You have a lot of obese and overweight, you know, combatives instructors. Yeah. So when uh, Billy Bob grabs you, first you go for the fingers, and you break the fingers apart, and then you jab them in the eyes, and then you expose the neck, and now you chew through the carotid. That guy's in way more danger of dropping dead from a heart attack while plowing down on the three burgers at Carl's Jr. than he is from ever being attacked. So I can't understand this fascination with, you know, the world's most deadly technique if you're not in shape to actually, you know, uh, jog a half mile, do 25 push-ups, not have a giant belly. These are not good things. The, uh, the Sistema guy, 
the, uh, the Russian guy with a great big belly. It's a joke. If you're that big and you're that fat, you're not, your self-defense skills could be on another planet. But you're going to die of a stroke in your sleep. And statistically, you're far more likely to die of a stroke in your sleep or a heart attack while running for the bus than you are, or cancer or, you know, losing your limbs from diabetes than you are being attacked. You're walking down the street and somebody jumps out and let's fight. Could happen. Could happen. It's possible. It's not very likely. The reality is that self-defense includes protecting your body and protecting yourself. And so work on your nutrition, work on your basic fitness, work on your basic cardio. We're not talking about turning you into a marathon runner. Just enough to keep your heart going and not develop arterial clogs all over your body. That's actually a really important component of self-defense, in my humble opinion.